welcome back. Let's go through every weapon in New World. The more you use a particular weapon, the more you'll level it up. Each weapon has two skill trees. Each level lets you unlock new abilities, passives and bonuses. Now I'm going to run you through every ability from every weapon in the game. Let's start with the strength weapons. The sword and shield, the weapon everyone starts with. So we should all be at least a little bit familiar with this one. This is the only weapon that you can use with a shield. The sword scales with strength, but dexterity also helps a bit. Let's start with the Swordmaster side. The Swordmaster skill tree is great for close quarters DPS. It's got some AoE and you can chase down enemies. The ultimate skill is called Leadership and it increases the damage of your entire party by 10%. Whirling Blade is the first ability you'll unlock. It does a nice little AoE that hits all nearby enemies. When upgraded, the more enemies you hit, the shorter its cooldown is. Hit 10 enemies to instantly reset the cooldown. Reverse Stab is just a simple attack that does decent damage. When upgraded, enemies cannot interrupt your attack and it reduces all sword cooldowns by 25%. Leaping Strike is a pretty fun ability for PvP. It's great for chasing down players. You leap forward towards your target and when upgraded, it'll slow down enemies if you hit them in the back and if they're low health, it'll do even more damage. Now let's look at the Defender Tree. This tree is all about tanking and control. The ultimate ability reduces the damage taken by your entire team by 30%, but only when you're actively blocking. Shield Bash is your bread and butter ability. It taunts enemies, forcing them to attack you, but only if you have the right gem socketed. I've got a separate video that I'm gonna put up about tanking gems, so check that out on my channel. Shield Bash will also stun, and when upgraded, the stun and the taunt get much better. Shield Rush is a fun little ability that makes you rush forward, it knocks back enemies, and when upgraded, it will also weaken them and slow them. And finally, Defiant Stance. This reduces all incoming damage by 30%. It's a very strong defensive cooldown, and it can also taunt if you have the right gem socketed. When upgraded, it also heals you for 15%. So all up, this is one of the best skill trees for tanking, gives you some self heals, gives you a lot of control, and a couple of taunts. All right, let's look at the hatchet. It scales off strength mostly, but also dexterity a little bit. The Berserker Tree is one of the better builds in the game in my opinion. It's a great strength DPS weapon, and its self-healing makes it okay for tanking as well. The ultimate ability is Defy Death, and it saves you from dying once a minute, which is epic. Your main ability is Berserk. It increases your damage by 20% for 15 seconds. It can also taunt, and it can be upgraded a lot. When upgraded, Berserk increases your movement speed, heals you every 5 seconds, removes crowd control, and prevents you from being interrupted. It's kind of insane, and you should use it as often as possible. Feral Rush is another ability you've got that makes you leap forward. When upgraded, it also roots enemies if you hit them in the back, so it's pretty good for chasing down players that are running away. The final ability is Raging Torrent, and it's used to pump out a bunch of damage. When improved, it also increases your movement speed. Now let's look at the other skill tree. There's a passive ability you can pick up early on that turns your hatchet into a throwing axe. Right click to aim, left click to throw. The range of this throw is pretty short. The ultimate ability will extend the duration of debuffs every time you successfully hit a target. Now that's a pretty good clue that this spec is all about debuffing your target. Let's look at infected throw. This ability will disease and weaken your target. This means they do less damage and they receive less healing. With upgrades, it also creates a cloud of disease that lingers for a few seconds. Rending throw will, you guess it, rend the target. Rend increases the damage that the enemies take. The idea is to use this ability to keep rend on your target as much as possible. The upgrades make this ability stronger if the target is already debuffed. So try not to let rend fall off your target. Finally, social distancing is all about keeping the enemy away from you. When you hit the target, it slows them, and you will hop backwards slightly after throwing the axe. When upgraded, it will also increase your movement speed and slow your enemy even more. The Warhammer is such a cool weapon. It scales off strength and only strength. Let's start with the Crowd Crusher Tree. This one is all about crowd control, using stuns and knockbacks. The ultimate ability will automatically slow any enemy affected by any of your crowd control abilities. That's pretty good. So let's take a look at the crowd control. Shockwave is an epic AoE that stuns all impacted enemies. It also taunts if you have the right gem equipped. Upgrading this ability will also weaken enemies and increase the range of the AoE. So you can use Shockwave as a stun as well as an AoE taunt. The next ability is Clear Out. 
it's a massive swing that knocks enemies back. When upgraded, it also improves your defense and gives you movement speed. The final ability is Path of Destiny, and it's, it's pretty awesome. It slams a wave of shockwaves that do damage, but when you upgrade it, these shockwaves will also stagger enemies. So all up, these are some pretty awesome crowd control abilities. Makes this spec pretty bloody good for a tank, but really anyone who wants to play that disrupting role with staggers and stuns and crowd control abilities and slows, then this is for you. Now let's look at the other skill tree for the Warhammer. This one's called Juggernaut, and it's more about DPS. The first ability is Armor Breaker, which, just like it says in the name, reduces the target's armor. You can upgrade this to make it also apply Rend to the target, which increases the damage the target takes. This should really be your opening ability, and you should keep these debuffs up on your target as much as possible. Mighty Gavel is a big attack that does a bunch of damage. It has a few upgrades, but the final upgrade is the ultimate ability which adds a second massive attack. So there's a lot of damage wrapped up in this ability. Wrecking Ball is another pretty cool attack. It smacks your target down to the ground. When upgraded, it also smacks nearby enemies. So a bit of an AOE effect. Now let's move on to the final strength weapon, the Great Axe. And strength is the only stat for this weapon as well. The Reaper skill tree is all about single target damage. The ultimate ability passively increases both your damage and your movement speed, but only if you're facing a nearby enemy. The first ability is Charge, and it does exactly what it says in the tin. The charge is unstoppable, which is nice, but there's not really a lot to say about these other upgrades. So let's look at Reap. This ability pulls enemies towards you. It also taunts if you have the gem equipped. The upgrades are pretty good. It has a built-in self-heal, and will do some AoE damage after pulling the mobs in. Now Execute will be doing the bulk of your damage, and it will do more damage to low health enemies. Upgrading it makes it unstoppable, and makes it always crit enemies with low health. Now let's look at the Mauler Tree. This one is all about AoE damage and crowd control. The ultimate ability basically ramps up your damage each time you attack, up to a maximum of 30%. Pretty strong. Whirlwind is a spinning cleave attack. If you hit an enemy, you can spin again, up to 4 times. When you upgrade this, you can spin up to 7 times in a row. It'll also increase your movement speed, and do more damage if there's more enemies in the Whirlwind. Maelstrom is another spinning attack, but this one pulls enemies closer. Upgrading it will extend its range, block projectiles, and when fully upgraded, does an extra spin for free. Finally, the coolest ability here in my opinion is Gravity Well. This throws your axe to make a vortex which sucks enemies in. It's very good for PvP, keeping enemy players basically rooted in place. When upgraded, any allies in the vortex will take less damage. So as you can see, the smaller tree is all about grouping enemies up, sucking them in, and just spinning on them. Now it's time to move on to the dexterity weapons. The spear is my favorite weapon in the game. It scales off dexterity and gets a little bit from strength as well. Now let's look at the impaler side first, because it's one of my favorites. The ultimate ability increases your damage for each debuff on the target. So obviously this build is all about them debuffs. Perforate jabs the target a few times and also applies rend. This increases the damage the target takes. When upgraded, the target is staggered if you manage to land all three jabs. Skewer makes your target bleed, which is basically a dot doing damage over time. Upgrading this will increase the bleed duration, and when you crit, you become empowered and do even more damage. Finally, Volt Kick is a fun little leap that also stuns your target. And if you hit a low health target, you become empowered and do even more damage. All up, it's a fun little build where you can stab and jab and skewer and it's just a good combination of abilities that are pretty fun to play with. The other skill tree for the spear is the Zona. This one is all about keeping a bit of distance between you and your enemies. The ultimate ability increases your damage when your stamina bar is full. Now the most flavorful ability here is Javelin. You can throw your spear and targets you hit will be staggered. Now don't worry, it's a magic Javelin, you don't have to go and pick it up again, you can just keep throwing it every time the cooldown's up. When you upgrade this ability, enemies will be knocked down all the way to the ground. If you get a headshot, it reduces the cooldown, and for long range shots, the damage is increased. Now Cyclone is a spin attack that hits multiple enemies, but it also pushes them away and slows them. If you upgrade this, it actually restores your stamina, which plays in nicely with the ultimate. The third ability is Sweep. This knocks the legs out from under your target, knocking them down. And these are the upgrades. So you can see that these three abilities are all quite good at keeping enemies at bay. Now the last melee weapon to talk about is the Rapier. This one scales off dexterity and a little bit from intellect, so it could be a nice melee weapon for a caster. 
The grace side of the skill tree is pretty awesome for PvP, which focuses on evasion and mobility. The ultimate ability is momentum. When you use an ability, your next light or heavy attack does more damage. So this means you should be weaving basic attacks in between your abilities. Evade is a very quick little dodge. With upgrades, it refunds stamina, increases movement speed, and hitting an enemy three times with a light attack will reset its cooldown. Repost is the signature ability. This is basically a counter attack. You strike a pose for one second, and if an enemy hits you during this time, it stuns them. You can upgrade this ability to make the stun last longer. Finally, Flash is your main damage and mobility attack. You fly forward doing decent damage and moving very fast. When upgraded, if you kill an enemy, the cooldown is basically reset. The other rapier skill tree is Blood, and it's much easier to play. Like the name suggests, these abilities are all about making your enemy bleed. Tondo is your main attack for applying bleeds, and the bleeds stack up. This ability should be used to build up as many stacks of bleed as you can. The next attack is Flurry, and this does a series of 5 attacks, but once you upgrade it, each individual attack will extend the duration of your bleeds. So this is important to make sure that the bleeds don't run out. And finally, Flourish will knock back enemies. But if you use a light attack just as Flourish ends, then you'll immediately follow up with a second attack called Finish. Finish will basically make the full damage of all your bleeds trigger immediately. The final upgrade of this ability is the ultimate ability for the tree. It basically increases the damage of your bleeds by 50% when you use Finish. So basically, stack up a few bleeds on your target, then use Finish to hit them for a massive burst of damage. That's it for the melee weapons. Let's check out the ranged weapons. The bow is a dexterity based weapon. You'll need to buy or craft arrows to shoot. Now with the bow, arrows will travel through the air in an arc, so it might take a little bit of practice to land your shots. Let's start with the skirmisher abilities. This is more of an AoE build, with some extra mobility built into it. The ultimate ability will cause leg shots to slow the target. Evade Shot is your main mobility ability. It's a simple bow shot that makes you leap back a short distance. You can upgrade it to also knock back the enemy. Poison Shot is an AoE ability. Basically, it makes a cloud of poison. Enemies that get poison take damage for 20 seconds, even after they leave the poison cloud. When upgraded, a direct shot will double the damage of the poison. Rain of Arrows is another simple AoE attack. Upgrading it will also make enemies bleed and be slowed. So this is an interesting little tree for doing a bit of AoE damage from a distance. Now the Hunter skill tree is probably more what you think of when you think of a bow. It's all about doing damage with arrows. The ultimate is Concussion. Headshots do more damage, and somehow magically refunds your arrows. But yeah, this spec is all about landing those shots. So let's have a look at Penetrating Shot. This is really the main attack. It's a single strong arrow shot that can punch through multiple enemies and you can upgrade it to increase your damage, especially at long range. The next ability is Rapid Shot. It shoots out three arrows, and the third arrow knocks back the target and does more damage. Upgrading this will make it stronger if you land all three of the shots. And finally, there's Splinter Shot. This causes your arrow to magically split into three arrows, each doing less damage. When upgraded, it'll split into five arrows. So really, this is your only AoE ability for spread out enemies. Now let's move on to the Musket. Again, you'll need to buy or craft ammo for this gun. It's a dexterity weapon, but intellect contributes a little bit as well. It's the only hit scan weapon in the game, so there's no travel time for your bullets. Both of the trees for the musket are mad fun. Let's start with the sharpshooter. The ultimate ability is Sniper, and it adds a 3x zoom to your musket, and it also increases the damage of headshots. All of the abilities in this tree improve your gunshots. Powder Burn causes your neck shot to make the enemy burn, basically taking damage over time, and when upgraded, it makes your basic attacks do more damage to burning victims. Power Shot is very similar. It powers up your next shot and it does more damage. Pretty simple. When upgraded, it does even more damage in certain situations. The final ability is Shooter's Stance. You can get down on one knee, and you can shoot three shots very quickly, with almost no reload time. When upgraded, this lasts for five shots. Now the other skill tree for the musket is pretty fun as well. This is the Trapper Tree, and the ultimate makes your shots do more damage if the enemy is affected by a status effect. So let's have a look at those status effects. The first ability is Traps. 
and just like it sounds, you can throw a trap on the ground. Enemies that walk into the trap cannot move for 3 seconds. Now this can be upgraded a lot. Trap targets will take more damage, attacks against them will heal you, and you can throw out multiple traps. It's a pretty powerful ability. Now Sticky Bomb is another fun ability. Basically it's a grenade that sticks to the enemy. When upgraded, it refunds your stamina and slows the targets. The final ability is Stopping Power, which basically just makes your next shot do more damage. Pretty basic. When upgraded, it also reduces the target's stamina regeneration and slows them. Now onto the Intelligence Weapons. The Ice Gauntlet scales with Intelligence, and only Intelligence. Let's start with the Tempest skills. These are all about slows and AoEs. The ultimate is called Ultimate Chill, and basically your ice abilities ramp up your ice damage. Ice Spikes is the first ability you'll learn. Basically it shoots a wave of spikes. The final spike does pretty big damage and pushes enemies back. When upgraded, the little spikes will also stagger enemies. Ice Storm slows enemies in an area and does AoE damage. Upgrading it will increase the damage that enemies take while in the storm. Finally, Wind Chill pushes back enemies that get too close, while also damaging them. You can move around while you cast this. Ok, let's have a look at the Builder Tree now. This skill tree is all about Ice Pylon. You can place a pylon that shoots at nearby enemies. There's a lot of upgrades for this, including the ultimate ability which doubles the pylon's health. The area around the pylon is frosted, which helps improve some of your other abilities. The next skill is Ice Shower. This creates an icy wall, and it roots and slows enemies that try to walk through it. When upgraded, it'll also increase the damage that enemies take, and it will make allies run faster. Finally, Entombed is an ice block. It makes you invulnerable for 10 seconds. You can break out of it yourself, or enemies can try and break the ice block to force you out. Upgrading this ability will improve your defenses after the ice block breaks. The Fire Staff is the final intelligence weapon. These builds are all about pumping out massive fire damage. So let's take a look at the Fire Mage. This spec is all about casting spells from a distance. The ultimate ability causes a rune to appear on the ground after casting a spell. Standing on this rune increases your spell damage. Pillar of Flame is the first ability. It's an AoE spell that blasts enemies in the area you select. Upgrading it will refund mana for every enemy hit. Meteor Shower is similar. It covers a much larger area, and it continues to rain meteors on an area while you channel the spell. Upgrading it will prevent you from being staggered while casting this will increase its damage, and refund some mana for every enemy hit. Finally, Fireball is a spell that you can shoot. It deals a blast of damage on impact, and continues to burn over time. Upgrading it will make the ground stay burning for longer, and it will also refund mana on a direct hit. The Pyromancer tree is quite different and requires close quarters. The ultimate ability causes your mana to regenerate 4 times faster when you stop casting for a few seconds. That's a hint that these spells will burn through your mana. Flamethrower is the signature ability. It spurts out fire which will damage enemies as well as set them on fire, causing them to take damage over time. You can keep flamethrower burning for as long as you have mana. Upgrading it will remove its cooldown completely, as well as increase its damage and its range. The next ability is Incinerate, which will explode out from your position, pushing enemies back, doing damage and setting them on fire. Upgrading this ability will cause it to also restore your health, which is pretty nice. And the final upgrade will cause it to hit twice. The last ability is Burnout. This is a dash. It damages all the enemies that you hit, as well as setting them on fire. Upgrading it will make it dash even further. The final weapon to talk about is the Life Staff. It's the only weapon that uses the Focus stat, and it's the one and only weapon for healing. Let's start with the aptly named Healing skill tree. This one focuses on direct healing abilities. The ultimate makes your heals on low health targets more powerful. Divine Embrace is a simple, single target heal. It snaps onto the player that you want to heal, and after a quick cast it heals your target. When upgraded, if you heal someone on low health, it'll bounce and heal another target, up to two times. Sacred Ground places a circle of healing on the ground. All allies standing in it will get slowly healed over time, and when upgraded, Allies standing in the circle will also be healed more from all your other spells. Finally, 
Splash of Light heals everyone in your group for a moderate amount. When upgraded, it'll also remove debuffs and restore your mana if you heal someone with low health. The other skill tree is called Protector, and it heals through buffing your allies. The ultimate ability causes your one direct heal to extend all your buffs. Now, Orb of Protection is the first ability, and it does a lot of things. Firstly, if you throw it at an enemy, it'll do damage. If you throw it at an ally, it'll reduce the damage they take, and it'll also give them a little heal. When upgraded, it'll make your allies heal over time, and will also splash onto nearby allies. Beacon is the next ability. It will also damage enemies, but whatever target you hit with it, friend or foe, it'll attach to, and will continue to heal any of your nearby allies over time. Upgrading it will also make your allies move faster. Finally, Light's Embrace is your targeted heal. This heals for a moderate amount, but if the target is affected by your other spells, it'll heal a lot more. As we mentioned earlier, it works with your ultimate ability. It'll extend the length of your buffs. So this skill tree is all about buffing your allies, making sure they've got all your buffs on them, and then healing them with your targeted heal to extend those buffs. And that's every weapon in New World. If you want to learn how to taunt, I've got another video on my channel that talks about that. If it's not there, it will be in a day or two. Now, this channel is pretty tiny. If this video helped you out, I'd really appreciate it if you could toss us a subscribe. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.